Instead of packing heat, Bruce Wayne relied on other, more innovative crime-fighting methods. Methods that became increasingly sophisticated over the years. In 1940, for example, Batman used infrared night vision goggles, a technology being developed at the time by the U.S. Navy. Night vision is heat vision, is literally what it is. If you think about light, everyone's familiar with the spectrum of the rainbow, the red, yellow, green, blue. There's also different spectrums that we can't see. And infrared is what we refer to when we're talking about the type of radiation you get from heat. So any hot body will emit this type of radiation, and you can design cameras to detect it. And so night vision is basically looking at that wavelength of light. Batman has lots of gadgets, but Batman's great thing was that many of them are all small enough to fit in his utility belt. And making things small can be a challenge, but it's not technologically impossible. And that's driving a lot of technology these days, is how can we make things smaller and smaller and still function the way we want them to. One early gadget Batman had in his utility belt was a miniature camera. The device was inspired by the ones actually being used by spies in the years prior to Batman's debut. Clandestine photography goes back into the 1930s with the commercial Minox camera. This was a camera that was invented in 1934 by a Latvian engineer by the name of Walter Zapp. His idea for the camera was a camera that could be held in one hand. But if you're not very dexterous with this camera, it does take two hands to cycle the film. In the commercial world, that's not an issue. But in our world, that draws attention, and we don't like that. Our challenge is to make a camera that can be easily concealed in one hand, small enough that it can be easily palmed. We want to be able to easily manipulate it with one hand. And while we're at it, we're CIA. We're always going to try to process and prove. We're going to make ours take twice as many shots. This is the camera that did it. This is the agency's first sub-miniature document copy camera. A camera like this is like one Batman might have in his utility belt. In the late 1940s and early 50s, as the world entered the atomic age, Batman's use of real science literally rocketed into the realm of science fiction. In the 50s, a lot of the, the fiction was very science fiction based. So, you know, Batman had ray guns. They flew in spaceships and things like that. It was just reflective of the times. In Batman number 109, the caped crusader used a heat ray to detonate explosives floating in Gotham City Harbor. It seemed far-fetched at the time, and was. But believe it or not, the US military is currently working on just such a device to add to its arsenal. A heat ray is a low frequency infrared kind of light. And the Army today is developing weapons based on heat rays, much like the one that Batman used. Called the active denial system, this non-lethal weapon directs high frequency microwaves over distances up to 550 yards. Roger, I'm ready for a 100% shot. Three Move. seconds on the CLT. Its heat ray is about as hot as a light bulb and can penetrate the clothing of aggressors without seriously harming them. As the 1960s ushered in technology that fueled the space race, Batman stayed a step ahead with advances of his own. In the 60s, as computer systems, mainframes came into play, then people began to catch on to computerization. Batman had databases in the Batcave. The first visible manifestation I saw of what a computer could be was the use of that technology on Batman. I think that was true for, probably for millions of kids. And maybe I was inclined to be a technology geek and learn how to do the programming in the early years because of it. By the time the 90s came around, his computer systems were so sophisticated that he could tap into the law enforcement networks and keep on top of crime. In today's world of GPS and cellular communications, the line between science fiction and science fact is getting thinner than ever.